Hello, hello, welcome to my studio. I'm Helen Wells and today I want to talk to you about interesting shapes and discovering interesting shapes to incorporate into your abstract or non-figurative artworks. So what I thought I would do is maybe show you a few artists that I think use shape brilliantly just to get our juices flowing and to inspire us. And then I wanted to share some really simple but useful techniques that I use in my own art practice to find, discover, develop shapes that appeal to me to help us think about interesting shapes in our own artwork. I always think it's really useful to look at how other artists have approached it. So I've selected a couple of books from my art shelf and I just thought I would show you inside them and it might help us just to start the session, getting our juices flowing and getting inspired by what some of the great artists have done with shape. So the first book I have selected is a book about the work of Rex Ray. Now he was an artist, American artist from San Francisco that was working in the early 2000s and he's predominantly a collage artist or was predominantly a collage artist, he's no longer with us. And he creates these beautiful collections of shapes on a page. And he really started off and developed his approach through cutouts, through cutting up old magazines and arranging shapes on a page. And I think collage can be such an interesting way to really find your artistic style in that way and to discover shapes. So the thing about collage is it allows you to move things around on the pictorial plane before you're committing to where you're, you're placing them. So he has taken a real collection of geometric and organic shapes and brought them together in a way that is very distinctively his. He's layering shape upon shape upon shape to create these like really magical, complex artworks. And I just think, I think he does such a beautiful job of exploring how shapes arranged on a page can actually be a really powerful artwork. So that was the first artist I wanted us to look at. And so the second artist I wanted to show you is an artist called Hilma Ath Klimt. Now she was working a hundred years before Rex Ray. She's from Sweden and she was working in the early 1900s. And her work isn't that well known, but she's a contemporary of some of the very famous early abstract artists. So she was working at a similar time to Kandinsky. And she's creating these wonderfully large paintings where she is arranging organic shapes and lines on the pictorial plane. And they're really quite beautiful, the way she has kind of picked unusual colours and shapes and arranged them. And they're big, they're really big paintings. When you see them in a book, you can't really get the scale of them, but they're immersive and um, they're very powerful. So I just wanted to show you a few examples of how very diverse artists have taken interesting shapes and really made their art career out of exploring how they arrange them in a way that is powerful, dynamic, interesting, exciting to them as artists. And so now I'm just gonna show you a few really simple techniques to discover and develop your own shapes for your own art making. So the first exercise I'm gonna recommend that we do is to create a grid and fill them with shapes. So this is a page from my sketchbook. Now, it's not a finished composition. It is really just a wonky grid that I've put and then I'm filling each little square with a shape. Now, the reason I do this is because I think there is great benefit in getting into a flow of creating. 
so I've just drawn a very wonky grid on a piece of paper and now I'm going to put a different shape in each square. And it's this kind of thing that helps me to think about what are the kind of shapes I like. So I'm just making up shapes and seeing what comes out but the sheer quantity of them takes the pressure off. I'm not creating one perfect shape. I've got a page of 50 shapes, or 50 boxes, and I'm gonna put a shape in each box. And what also happens is that the negative space around the shapes also create interesting things that I wouldn't have just sat down and done on my own. So this is one I prepared earlier, and I was looking at it, and there's, a, there's one shape that I just love, this one here, and it was the 34th shape I did. <laughs> and I think there is something to be learnt from that. That actually, if we give ourselves a challenge of creating 50 shapes, it takes the pressure off, because we know that we can't create 50 brilliant, perfectly excellent shapes, so we just start creating. So I'd recommend creating a grid. I've written, I've drawn my grid with a pencil, and now I've got a felt tip pen, and I'm literally going to go through each square and put a completely different shape in it. Or not a completely different shape, whatever comes out of my pen. I'm going to think about straight lines and curvy lines. I'm going to add shapes to shapes and see what happens. So let's move this out of the way so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to just see what happens. You might want to add shapes to shapes. So that's a circle and a triangle. So that's my first shape. Then I'm just going to do something a bit more kind of weirdly wonky. I'm just going to carry on right the way through each box to see what I can create. And what often happens is I'm not thinking about it but it, the negative space in between the shapes also create interesting shapes. So see what happens if you do something similar. So we're not creating an artwork here, we're not creating a masterpiece, we're just seeing what happens if we have to create 50 shapes. And the grid somehow just gives you a framework, but it also gives you It means you're not really thinking about where you're placing them. So you're taking some of the pressure off. And I'm kind of doing straight lines and curvy lines. I'm seeing what happens. It, when I have to create different shapes. And you see, these some of these boxes, I drew these boxes with a pencil and they're all wonky and slightly different sizes so I didn't want each of my grid or boxes or lines to be the same size so I wanted some variety. So there we go, a grid of random shapes and I'm going to come back and show you what it looks like at the end. So this is my finished exercise and what I like to do after any exercise is just take a moment to reflect on it. So it only took me a few minutes to complete but there are some things that I'm beginning to really like here and I think it could be really useful to reflect on the things that you love in your own artwork or that you enjoy or that excite you in your own work because the more we can tune into that the more we can add them into our artworks and the more exciting our, our artworks become. So looking at this now after I've done it I can see that there are certain kind of combinations and things that I'm enjoying so I quite like the shapes with a shape inside and they just came as an accident because I was just being super quick and not filling in all the shapes but I quite like how those sort of white spaces and shapes within shapes are creating interest. I'm also really enjoying shapes with a little tail uh, or a line or a string or something that's coming off the shape, a kind of elongated shape where it's got a shape 
with a, a tail or a line. And I'm also enjoying the negative space. So some of the white shapes that have been created in the gaps are quite interesting to me. And I can see that this kind of simple exercise, I could take a shape that I really enjoyed and try and make a whole artwork repeating that shape. Or I could just take a little corner, I could take a little photograph, find a little corner of this exercise that I enjoy and see if I can find an interesting composition and then try it in different colours, different materials. So I like to take a simple exercise and use it as a springboard or a route map or a signpost to something else. So I'm always asking myself, what am I enjoying here? What do I like here? And how can I take it forward? One of the ways that I love to find shapes is by really going out in the world or even around my house and going on a shape safari, actively searching and seeking and gathering inspiration from the world around me. And I often take my camera or my phone out for a small walk, just leave my house and go and see what shapes I can find in the world. And it is amazing. The slowing down, the looking, means that I discover and connect with the world around me so much more than I would have if I was just walking on past. So that active seeking shapes really allows me to find things that actually are quite fascinating and interesting to me. And I find that the more I kind of get into the habit of really looking and really paying attention and slowing down, the more I find, and it becomes this wonderful virtuous circle. So I really recommend going on a shape walk. So taking your camera, taking your phone, taking your sketchbook, if that's the thing that, that excites you, and going to see what you can find. And I'm just always delighted by the things I've discovered and it takes me a little while to get into it sometimes but I often come back with so many different ideas and different shapes that I've seen. What it also does is it means that I have to pay attention to the shapes that I find interesting. So in the seeking I have to also better understand the things that I find visually pleasing and exciting and so it's a really helpful technique, tool that I use when I'm feeling under-inspired and I always come back with a renewed sense of excitement and also a connection to the world around me. These pages were made by overlapping shapes on top of shapes. And when you draw a shape on top of a shape, where the lines intersect, it creates these unusual shapes and patterns, which you may not have created in and of yourself. So let me show you how I did that. I started by drawing a big organic shape, and then right on top of that, I drew a spiky shape and then I added a few lines so one line coming from the top to the bottom one line coming from the side to side and then I added one extra random shape for luck into the composition to try and create something pleasing so let's get a piece of paper and I'll just show you how I did this. So I start off with an organic shape. Now I'm doing this with a big thick black pen so you can see what I'm doing but I recommend you probably do this with a pencil. So I'm going to just draw an organic shape. And I'm having the shape come in off the side of the page. So I'm wanting to utilise 
the whole page. So I'm not just putting my shape right bang in the middle, I'm sort of having it come off the side. I often find that artworks that are kind of going off the side or have things coming in feel more dynamic. So I'm starting with one organic shape. The next shape I'm going to draw is a spiky shape. So in art it can be useful to think of variety and difference and contrast and adding in things that are different to each other to create interest. So here I've got a curvy organic shape, so I'm going to add in a spiky shape right over the top. Just drawing some lines. See my pen's running out, but that's okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw one line that goes from the top of the page to the bottom of the page and I'm bisecting some of these other lines that are here and then I'm going to create a line from this side of the page to this side. So at the moment, and particularly because I've done this with a black pen, it looks like a hot mess, <laughs> which is fine because then what I do is I go in with colour and I select some of the shapes to colour in and some of the shapes to leave white. And I think it can create quite beautiful, interesting pages in my sketchbook. And so some of these shapes here, I wouldn't necessarily have drawn that if I was just sat down with a piece of paper. But because the way the lines kind of intersect and cut it off and it can create quite interesting complex shapes with the simplest of techniques. So I can look here and I can see that maybe look there's quite interesting shape forming here just from the way that the lines have bisected and created something that I quite like. So overlapping shapes can be a really good way of creating completely new shapes. So I've just highlighted that little shape here in dark. There's something quite interesting. It's got a curved line and it's also got points. So that's a way of discovering shapes. And then what I do with something like this is I would highlight or... or pick which particular shapes in this composition to add colour to. So you could do this in black and white. I'd recommend not doing it with a big black felt tip pen like I have, but I just wanted to show you the theory <laughs> and how I created these pages. And there's something quite dynamic and interesting about them, but it's also allowing me to create a whole series of shapes really simply. And the key with anything like this kind of exercise is then to think actually what do I enjoy, what am I liking and pay attention to that. What are the things in this composition that are exciting me? And I can see that some of these shapes I could really incorporate into my abstract work because there's just something dynamic about them that I am enjoying. So I hope that session on shapes was interesting and that you found something that you can use and incorporate into your own art making practice. Thank you so much for watching, it's been such a pleasure to spend some time with you.